कथना कथी न आवे तोट कथ कथ कथी कोटि कोट कोट सो कथ एयर मीन्स दैट स्पीकिंग एंड स्पीकिंग कथ कथ कथी वी वो ऑलरेडी सीन इन द लास्ट वन मीन्स द कथा कथ कथ स्पीकिंग स्पीकिंग द स्पीच कोटि कोट 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 कम्स फ्रॉम द वर्ड करोड करोड मीन्स टेन मिलियन कोटि कोट कोट मीन्स मिलियंस अपॉन मिलियंस अपॉन मिलियंस ऑफ टाइम्स पीपल हैव ट्राई टू डिस्क्राइब इवन नाउ दिस इज वॉट वी डूइंग वी डूइंग विच आर वी ट्राइंग टू गिव एन एक्सप्लेनेशन कथ कथ कथि कोटि कोट कोट दिस दिस कंटिन्यूज this description this continuous trying to describe god has been done millions upon millions of millions of times i e countless times kath kath kathi so speaking and speaking this speech has been done millions of times then da de lande thak pae this is a very interesting line no matter what our efforts the dialu the, the provider keeps providing denda den wala the giver keeps giving denda de keeps giving and the receiver the taker keeps taking until thak pahe until they get exhausted thak exhausted the giver gives is giving right now the receiver gets tired gets exhausted why why does the receiver get exhausted do we get tired of god's gifts does this line mean that we actually reach a point where we get tired of god's gifts most people would say no i don't i never get tired so is this a contradiction and bear in mind we've already seen the line pukhya puk na utri that hunger never finishes yeah je banna puriya par if we tie all of the world's possessions and we collect everything still pukhya puk na utri so how on one line can gurbani say that desires never complete and here gurbani is saying denda de lende thak pae does it get tired do we get tired is gurbani contradicting itself so gurbani has already given it clearly in the first time that we never get tired of god's gift so that's not what this line means this line doesn't mean the god keeps giving gifts and we keep taking it until we get so exhausted that's not what he's talking about we don't get tired we know how we are right we never get tired it's never enough what it's talking about here is that we grow old thak pai means our body just in consuming we keep consuming until the point that our body is just giving up but we don't stop giving up yeah lend there we keep we keep taking in fact the next line confirms this idea juga jugantar khai khai throughout the ages we keep eating we keep consuming so it doesn't mean that thak pai that means we get tired cuz how can we then say juga jagan tar khai khai that in the next line we're saying throughout the ages we've just constantly we keep consuming so there's no idea that we get tired of receiving god's gifts that's not what this means yeah otherwise it just contradicts with the next line that we keep taking the giver keeps giving until the point that we get so old we grow old and die but we keep taking and the giver keeps giving this system keeps going on remember it's talking about hukum this whole thing is talking about the system of hukum hukum just keeps going gurbani doesn't use the tipi so there's two schools of thought one that says you pronounce gurbani as it's written the other says you have to know some grammatical rules about how the language is spoken we you do the same thing in english for example we don't say the word knife is pronounced with a k now your puritans might look at it and say that you have to pronounce it it's written the gurus have written it you just have to say it 
So the other school of thought will say, but actually that's not how you pronounce the word. Yeah, the word is pronounced with a tipi in there. Two schools of thought. Yeah, it doesn't really matter how you do it. So the other way to look at this line, dinda de lande takpai, that the previous line talk about the ones who are trying to describe, they can get tired. The ones who do the katha, kat, kat, kathi, koti, kot, kot, they can get tired, but the receiver keeps on going. The, the, sorry, the giver keeps on giving, but the receiver, it's like he can't write it down quick enough. Yeah? Imagine somebody's giving you a speech and you're trying to write every single word down. So imagine somebody trying to write every word that the whole universe is saying. The universe keeps giving, keeps on going, but the one taking it all down, he's going to get tired. So these religious books are always going to be limited. Yeah, They never should be seen as the complete description. So that's one way to, to look at Lende Thakpai. The other way is that your body itself gets old. So who are we talking about here? It's not just the olden days people, right? Think about right now, what are people trying to do? Scholars keep coming up, academics. Philosophers keep coming up with new theories, new ideas. God is like this, God is like that. You go to any bookshop and you'll see books about religious theories and there's an endless supply of new books being written. Yeah, And scientists, what are scientists doing? You have an area of science for every single part of the universe. Some people are studying the oceans, some are studying the stars, some are studying microbes and microbacteria, some are studying the laws of nature, physics, some are studying all the chemicals. Yeah? Ultimately what they're doing is they're all trying to write down how does this universe work. They're just saying just every time we, we discover something more, something new comes out of it. only in the last few years that they've discovered that we don't have nine planets, we've got many more planets just within our own solar system. Yeah? So we don't even know how many planets we have in our solar system, let alone how many galaxies there are and how many universes upon universes. So every scientist is trying to write something about the universe in some way. And Guruji is saying, that's fine, but it'll never end. As long as you know that you're never going to get to an end, I might as well tell you now. Yeah, and Guru Nanak Dev Ji has written this 500 years ago. We're still going. There's still more knowledge coming out about the universe. So anyone who's trying to quantify God or count any type of measurement, anyone who's trying to measure the universe, they'll never end. It's almost saying it's a futile pursuit. It's a bit of a waste of trying to describe the universe, yeah? We'll come on to this specific idea much later in Japji Sahib when Guruji talks about pata la pata, lak aga saga. This very idea about trying to quantify the universe. Dinda de lande thakpai. Juga jug antar kahi kai. Jug means an age, a long period of time. Juga jug antar means in ages upon ages, jug antar within ages and throughout the ages. Juga jug antar. Kahi kai. We just keep going, we keep consuming. So throughout the ages, we have this system where life is being created, destroyed, life is coming in, life is going out. New life is being born, we consume, we consume, we consume, we grow up, we grow old, we die. Yeah? So we're seeing the same ideas that we were talking about in the beginning, which is about saaj kare tanke, that body being created and being returned to dust. So this idea of us just living has happened again and again and again. It just keeps going on throughout the ages. New life is being born, we consume, we consume, we consume, we grow up, we grow old, we die. Yeah? So we're seeing the same ideas that we were 
talking about in the beginning, which is about saaj kare tanke, that body being created and being returned to dust. So this idea of us just living has happened again and again and again. It just keeps going on throughout the ages. And we keep consuming. The giving hasn't stopped. The consuming hasn't stopped. This is how hukam works. This is just how the universe works. Yeah? Notice there's no judgment being placed anywhere here. Guru Sahib is just saying this is how it works. Yeah? The work of hukam keeps continuing. So let's think of an example. How do we keep consuming? What do we mean by we keep consuming? Do we just talk about materialistic things? There's another way to look at kai kai. That every moment when you breathe in, you breathe out, what do you do? You expect the next breath, next breath to come in. We take it for granted. We breathe in, we breathe out, we expect the next breath to be there. Yeah? Almost as if like it has to be there to serve us. Yeah? This is not living in conscious awareness of hukum. In awareness of hukum, you're aware of every breath as being a blessing. Every moment is not taken for granted. You're not just mindlessly consuming. That's what Gurbani is talking about here. People who are just mindlessly consuming. Kai Kai. Every meal you take, you know the next one is already there. Every moment that you exist in, you expect the next moment to be there. But if you live consciously and remember that this very moment is a moment that Hukam has given something to you, you don't take it for granted. Juga Jagantar Kai Kai Hukami Hukam Chalai Rao. Here we talked last time we talked about five different spellings of Hukam in the previous Shabbat, yeah? So Hukami means the one doing the Hukam. For simplicity, we said the commander. The one doing the Hukam. Hukami, the commander, Hukam. Ankar, singular, plural, the command. The commander's command, Jalai Rao, is continuing to walk on this path. Its path is continuing. The commander's command, Hukami Hukam, Jalai Rao. The path of the command keeps going. The commander's command continues its path, we can say. Hukami hukam chalai ra. 